everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join the Needy Med Special Topic Webinar, Connecting Underinsured Patients with the Treatment They Need, presented by our partners, the PAN Foundation. My name is Carla. I'm the Director of User Engagement at Needy Meds. And before we get started with the presentation, I'd like to offer a few tips so you can make the most out of it. First of all, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, you can feel free to type them at any time into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel, but know we will reserve answering questions until the end. If we don't get the chance to answer your specific question, we will follow up with you by email. Of course, we will also provide the contact information for ourselves and Needy Meds and the PAN Foundation at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Needy Meds YouTube channel, which we hope you subscribe to. And you can find our PowerPoint slide decks along with other material we thought you'd be interested in checking out in that handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel. So let's get started really quickly with what is Needy Meds. For those of you who are not familiar with us, what you're looking at is our mission statement, a statement about how we achieve that mission, and our vision statement. But simply put, Needy Meds connects people to programs that will help them afford their healthcare expenses. And we do that free and anonymously through a website, needymeds.org, and helpline, 1-800-503-6897. And I always like to put up a screenshot of our website because needymeds.org really is the face of our organization. It also gives me a chance to just point out a few resources. For example, if you are interested in locating healthcare cost savings resources, check out the Healthcare Savings tab. To stay up to date on what's new at Needy Meds, check out that Education tab right next to it. This is where you can sign up to receive webinar announcements, monthly newsletters, and order brochures, for example. Just a few moments ago, I mentioned that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Needy Meds YouTube channel. And you can find a link to that channel on the top right of our homepage with the rest of the social media icons. And that YouTube icon is the third one from the left. Be sure also to check out other upcoming webinars on the calendar of events on the bottom right hand of our homepage. Now, as you saw a couple of slides ago, a big part of our mission is education. And of course, we define that by educating people about needy meds and the resources we offer. But we also fulfill that part of our mission by informing our users about other resources that will help people on their healthcare journey, which is why we are so pleased to have our friends and colleagues from the PAN Foundation here with us today. So let me tell you just a little bit about the PAN Foundation. PAN helps underinsured people with life-threatening, chronic, and rare diseases get the medications and treatment they need. And they do this by paying for their out-of-pocket costs and advocating for improved access and affordability. So now, let me tell you a little bit about our guest hosts that are going to talk to you today about the PAN Foundation. Audrey Quartry is the Senior Manager of Provider Relations and helps to develop and implement PAN's provider outreach strategy. She has over 10 years of experience in the healthcare industry, focusing on insurance coverage, reimbursement, and access to care programs. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Marketing from Syracuse University. Now let me tell you a little bit about her colleague, Joan, who is also here with us today. Joan Zhang is the Manager of Medical Affairs at PAN and reviews the clinical parameters, parameters of PAN's assistance programs and conducts outreach to pharmacies and related professional groups. She's a licensed pharmacist with a Doctor of Pharmacy degree from Shenandoah University, Bernard J. Dunn School of Pharmacy. So without further ado, and hopefully seamlessly, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic and the screen to Joan. So bear with me while we do that, that may take a moment. And as Joan grabs that screen, and right before I pass the mic to her, I will remind you again that you can feel free to submit questions to us by typing them into that question section 
of your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll do our best to answer them all at the end of the presentation. So with that, Joan, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to you. You can take it away. And everyone, thanks for joining us and enjoy the presentation. Hello, everyone. We are very excited to be here today. And thank you, Carla, for the warm introduction. We are so glad that you were able to take time out of your busy schedule to join this webinar session on connecting underinsured patients with the treatment they need at the Patient Access Network Foundation, also known as PAM. My name is Joan. I am the Manager of Medical Affairs at PAM, and I am joined today by my colleague, Audrey Corte, our Senior Manager of Provider Relations. Today, we will walk you through what we do, why we do it, and how you can apply and receive assistance with PAM. We know that we're going to provide you with a lot of information today and that you may not be able to absorb all of it. So we encourage you to send us your questions. And as Carla said, this webinar will be recorded and the video will be made available for your review later. First, let's start with why copay assistance is important. As you may already know, Access to medically necessary treatment is critical for successful patient outcomes. However, this access is often blocked by high cost sharing, which can negatively impact both quality of life and the course of a disease. Cost sharing refers to healthcare expenses that are not covered by an individual's insurance plan and must be paid out of pocket by the patient. These out of pocket costs come in the form of deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, and premium. Patients who have insurance but are unable to afford the out-of-pocket costs associated with their treatment are considered underinsured. A 2018 study by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that on average, Medicare beneficiaries spend 41% of their Social Security payments on out-of-pocket costs and that number will rise to 50% by 2030. Another study by the Commonwealth Fund reported that the underinsured population in 2020 was more than 40 million and is expected to grow, creating an even bigger gap in the underinsured population. For many patients with chronic, rare, or life-threatening diseases, this cost of care can add up quickly, putting many patients in the underinsured population. In 2020, Chagall Research conducted a survey to assess patient satisfaction and the perception of services provided by PAN among our patients receiving financial assistance. After receiving assistance from PAN, an estimated 94% of patients responded that support from PAN made them more likely to take their medications as prescribed and had a positive impact on their families. Also, 92% reported that support from PAN improved their quality of life and decreased stress for the whole family, showing a true need for support from patient assistance programs for the underinsured population. The Patient Access Network Foundation believes that out-of-pocket costs should not prevent anyone from obtaining medically necessary treatments. And so today, we are going to tell you how PAN can help remove the financial barriers and alleviate high out-of-pocket costs for the underinsured. So with that, I'll turn it over to Audrey, who will tell you more. Thank you, Joan, and hello, everyone. Let me begin by telling you who we are and how you can apply for assistance with PAN. The PAN Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping federally and commercially insured patients by helping them pay their out of pocket cost for their prescribed medications. Since its founding in 2004, PAN has helped nearly 1 million underinsured patients with over $4 billion in financial assistance. We have three types of assistance programs. 
First, we have the medication assistance programs, which includes assistance for deductibles, copays, and coinsurance. We also have the premium assistance programs, which assist the patient to pay their insurance premium. And lastly, we recently launched a new transportation assistance programs, which helps to cover the cost of approved transportation, such as rideshare, car rentals, parking, and airfare. We also cover approved lodging, such as hotels, Airbnb, and temporary housing, as well as other ex travel expenses incurred from the patient's treatment visits. All our programs are provided in the form of financial grants. PAN provides financial assistance for over 70 disease funds ranging from chronic to rare and oncology diseases. We recently added liver cancer and spinal muscular atrophy to our list of disease funds and launched the COVID-19 financial support program to support those affected by these uncertain times. The COVID-19 disease fund is unlike any of our other assistance programs in that it covers a range of services, including over-the-counter and prescription medications, medical supplies and equipment, and transportation to medical or pharmacy appointments, as well as groceries and meals. To see a full listing and current statuses for our programs, please visit our website at panfoundation.org. A common question we receive at PAN is what we cover and do not cover. At PAN, we cover products that are FDA approved or listed in official compendia or evidence-based guidelines for the specific disease fund. These includes all prescription medications in each disease fund formulary, such as brand and generic medications, bioequivalent or biosimilar medications, as well as specialty drugs and radiopharmaceuticals. Very few disease funds also cover medical supplies for administering treatments. An example of this is our Parkinson's disease fund. Now that you know what PAN covers, it is also important to highlight what PAN does not cover. As we often receive requests for pay payments for products or services that we do not cover. This includes any medication which is covered at 100% by the patient's insurance. We also do not cover any medications which the insurance did not cover, as well as medications not on our disease fund formulary. However, there is an exception to this rule. If a medication is indicated or guideline recommended for a disease state, but it is not listed on our formulary, you may submit a request on our website or call us to add the drug to our formulary. Finally, we do not cover medical services such as doctor's visit, lab work, genetic testing, ER or hospital visits, and diagnostic testing. At PAN, our grants provide 100% assistance support for most of our patients. We look at the historic data as well as industry trends to determine how much a patient is going to need for a specific disease fund and allocate a certain dollar amount to that fund. In instances where the patient needs additional assistance because their out-of-pocket cost is higher than the average, we offer second grants to cover the remainder of the enrollment, enrollment period. This means that if the disease fund is open at PAN and the patient runs out of funding before their enrollment period ends, you can apply for a second grant to cover the remainder of the eligibility period. In addition, we review all assistance amounts annually to ensure patients receive adequate financial support throughout the year. The next few slides will focus on how to apply for assistance with PAN. There are four easy steps to keep in mind when applying for assistance with PAN. First, check to see if the fund you're interested in is open. Second, verify if the patient meets the eligibility criteria. Third, 
gather all the required information, and fourth, contact PAN to apply. So let's take this checklist and review what is needed at each step. Step one, check to see if the disease fund is open. There are several ways to do this. You can go on the PAN website at panfoundation.org under Find a Disease Fund or type in the name of the disease fund on the homepage. Another way to verify if a disease fund is open is by visiting our patient, our provider, or our pharmacy portal to verify if the fund is open on the Disease Fund and Medications tab. Finally, you can call PAN to verify the status of all our disease funds. Step two, verify if you meet the eligibility criteria for the disease fund in which you are applying for assistance. The following are our eligibility guidelines for all our disease funds. One, the patient must be getting treatment for the disease fund in which he or she is applying. This means that if you're applying for assistance for our asthma disease fund, the patient must be diagnosed with asthma and the medication you are seeking assistance with must be covered under our asthma fund formulary. Two, the patient must have health insurance that covers his or her qualifying medication or product. Three, the patient's medication or product must be listed on PAN's list of covered medications. Four, the patient's income must fall at or below the federal poverty level specified by this assistance program. It's important to note that the insurance and income criteria vary for each program, so be sure to verify this and all of the program guidelines on the specific disease fund page on our website. Finally, the patient must live and receive treatment in the United States or U.S. territory, although U.S. citizenship is not a requirement. This is the homepage of the PAN Foundation website. Here, patients and caregivers, as well as healthcare providers and pharmacies, can check patient eligibility in, right in the, on this page. In addition to checking the eligibility, you can also complete the full application directly on this page. The next slide is an example of our assistance program page un under find a, find a Disease Fund on our website. Here, you can verify the assistance amount, eligibility criteria, and covered medications and diagnosis codes. Step three, gather all required information. If you meet all the criteria listed on the previous slide, you will need to gather the following information before you start the application process. You will need your demographic information, such as the name, address, phone number, and email address. You will also need the diagnosis and medication name, as well as your health insurance information your income and number of people in your household. And finally, you will need the physician and facilities contact information. Now you're ready to apply for assistance with PAN. There are three main ways to do this. You can either give us a call Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time at 866-316-7263 or you can log on to one of our three self-service portals listed here. As you can see, each portal is designed with the end user group in mind. The provider portal serves our healthcare providers, whereas our pharmacy portal is intended to serve our pharmacy personnel. And most importantly, our patient portal is designed to serve our patients and patient caregivers. You can also apply right on the website as we discussed previously. On average, it takes about six minutes to complete an application and an enrollment decision is instant. 
will provide you with the enrollment details and processing information right away and then follow up with an email or fax to the enrolling physician's office. We will also ensure that the enrollment details and processing information is emailed or mailed to the patient as well. Once you're enrolled, you can begin submitting claims to PAN immediately. Now that the patient is enrolled, there are a few things to consider about the PAN grant. Each PAN grant eligibility period is for 12 months. However, if the patient enrolls for the first time in any of our disease funds, we will help them cover any claims incurred in the past 90 days before the enrollment date. The grant use policy. In addition, claims must be submitted every 120 days to, to keep the grant open throughout the eligibility period. This is considered our grant use policy. Renewals. After the end of your eligibility period, you may apply for a renewal grant starting one month before the end of your grant. The disease fund wait list. When a disease fund is closed at PAN, you can place yourself on the wait list. You will note, we will notify you via email when it opens in the wait list status. Individuals on the wait list have the first opportunity to apply before the general public. We want the reimbursement process to be simple and quick for you. So we provide several ways for you to submit your claims. One, if you receive your medication from a pharmacy, the pharmacy can bill PAN. Two, if you receive your medication from the doctor's office, the doctor can bill PAN. Excuse me. It looks like we maybe you want to backtrack just a little bit because it looks like we lost audio the last few seconds. Great. Thank you, Carla. Let me go ahead and start again on this slide. We want the reimbursement process to be simple and quick for you. So we provide several ways for you to submit your claims. One, if you receive your medication from a pharmacy, the pharmacy can bill PAN. Two, if you receive your medication from the doctor's office, the doctor can bill PAN. Three, if you prefer to bill PAN directly, you can submit the prescription label or remittance advice for services rendered at the pharmacy or an explanation of benefits for services rendered at the doctor's office, along with a completed direct member reimbursement form. Additional information on filing claims can be found on our website at panfoundation.org on the FAQs under Get Help. We'll also make sure to communicate with you every step of the way until you receive your payments. We understand that managing an illness is difficult and our patients who apply for assistance with PAN may need additional assistance They may also have questions about their disease and treatment, side effects and medication adherence. They may also benefit from connecting with a compassionate community that can help patients deal with the physical and emotional complexities of their disease. That is why we have formed alliances with leading patient advocacy groups, such as American Lung Fund Association and the National Kidney Foundation, to name a few to provide patients with the holistic support they need. When a patient or caregiver applies a PAN, they are given an option to opt into receiving communications with a respective alliance partner. If the patient opts in, 
our alliance partner will reach out directly to those interested in learning more. We have also joined forces with leading organizations to conduct research and take positions on policies to help our patients. We have extensive educational resources to help patients understand their insurance in the healthcare landscape, as well as how to ask the right questions during their doctor's visit and advocate for policy change changes to name a few. All these resources can be found under Explore Resources page on the PAN website. I'm really excited that I had this opportunity to tell you about our programs, and I hope that you enroll with PAN to benefit from the many assistance that we have available for patients. And now I'll turn it back over to Joan. Thank you, Audrey. We want to encourage you to stay connected with us once you enroll with PAN. We understand that you may have a busy schedule and because of that, we've made our processes quick and simple for you to stay connected. We provide many resources to help you along the way. One way to stay connected is through our portals. We have three portals, one for the patient, the provider, and the pharmacy. Each portal is designed with the end user group in mind. If you are a patient or a caregiver, you may apply at PAN apply.org. Healthcare providers and pharmacies may apply at providerportal.panfoundation.org and pharmacyportal.panfoundation.org, respectively. On all three portals, you may utilize the following features. You can manage your account, review your eligibility period and grant balance, sign up for a second grant if you're out of funds, Renew your grant starting from one month before the end of the eligibility period and review correspondence letters regarding your account. In addition to these features, you may also communicate with our portal support team via secure messaging, view process claims and run reports, as well as upload and submit claims on the portals. Finally, announcements and updates are displayed on both pharmacy and provider portal login pages. All this can be done without picking up the phone. Another great way to stay connected with PAN is through our newsletters. We have a general PAN newsletter where we discuss what is new and upcoming events, as well as our positions on healthcare costs. In addition, we also have the provider and pharmacy newsletters where we provide information on our program, tips and guidance on using our services, our newly added disease fund, and stories from our patients and program representatives. PAN has also created a free web-based app called FunFinder. This first of its kind app helps all, pay, all audiences track the disease fund statuses across all the nine charitable co assistance foundations. You can simply go to fundfinder.org or you can find the link on our website. Once you sign up, you may follow any disease fund and receive notification alerts via email or text message when the specific fund opens at any of the foundations. FundFinder helps you save time by not having to frequently check multiple websites. Our goal is to help you find the support and resources you need so you can spend less time on the manual work. We recently put together an excellent resource explaining the extra help program benefits, requirements, and the application process. The Extra Help Program helps limited income patients pay Medicare prescription drug costs. It can dramatically reduce your out-of-pocket costs, especially if you take multiple medications. There are two levels of coverage, full and partial. People eligible for the full Extra Help are automatically enrolled in the program, but those who are eligible for partial Extra Help 
must apply to receive benefits. To find out if you qualify for partial extra help, please visit panfoundation.org slash extra help for more information. With financial help from patient assistance programs such as PAN, patients are more likely to start and stay on treatment, which leads to improved clinical outcomes, increased quality of life for the patient and their family, less time missed at work, and increased productivity at work. Finally, we know that the PAN Foundation is one of many resources to help patients. We encourage you to reach out to us. By doing so, we can listen to your needs and understand how we can help. Now I will switch it back over to Audrey. Thank you, Joan, and thank you all so much for joining us today. To learn about the PAN Foundation and our programs, you can call us at 866 866- 316-7263, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Or you can apply at panfoundation.org or on our portals. You may also reach out to us using the email address on this slide. If you have questions about a particular situation, and we will be more than happy to assist you. We look forward to working with you soon. And again, thank you so much for your time. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Carla, who will lead our question and answer section. Audrey and Joan, thank you so much for that thorough and most importantly, easy to understand presentation. I'm glad our audience got a chance to see why Needy Meds is so proud of our partnership with the PAN Foundation. It's not only that the breadth and scope of the much needed assistance they provide is so important, but it's the fact that uh, the PAN Foundation and their team make go out of their way to make sure accessing that potential help is easy and straightforward. Um, And don't worry, I know Audrey and Joan went over a lot of information, so don't forget you can find their PowerPoint slide deck in that handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, um, as promised, I will put Audrey and Joan's contact information up again later on at the end of the presentation, as well as my contact information and the contact information for Needy Meds. A reminder, if you do have questions, go ahead. I do see some coming in, but you can type them into that question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. And before we get to those questions, and it looks like they're all for Audrey and Joan, I want to remind everybody that Needy Meds is also here as a source of support. If you are having trouble affording your medications or other healthcare expenses, please check out that healthcare savings tab on needymeds.org that I pointed out to you in the beginning of the presentation, or reach out to our call center counselors, and I'll show you that number again on within the next couple of slides. Sometimes it is easier to speak with a live person, So as Audrey and Joan provided the phone number for the PAN Foundation, I will again remind you of that uh, phone number to the Needy Meds call center. In the meantime, I will mention what you're looking at on your screen right now are all of the different categories of healthcare savings that will pop up under that healthcare savings tab on needymeds.org. So just keep in mind we are here as another source of support should you need it or a loved one, a client, or a family member. As promised, I want to leave up that contact information for Audrey and Joan, as well as the contact information to PAN and Needy Meds on, at the bottom of that screen. So let's get to some of those questions coming in. Um, one of the first one is, and this I'm, I'm actually, I'm looking at some of the questions coming in, and I'm guessing you get these a bunch of times. Um, but it really gives us the opportunity to drive home some important points that our audience really may be interested in. So a thank you to our audience for participating in the question and answer section. So let's get to this first one coming in, which is, can I download the Fun Finder app on my phone? Thank you for your question. So currently, Fun Finder is not available on any of the app stores. Um, It is a web-based app. So as of now, you can access it on your internet browser. 
With that being said, you can still access Fund Finder on your phone by going to fundfinder.org. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you again to our audience for that question, because I say this pretty much every webinar, that if an audience member is thinking of a question, I hope they ask it, because the chances are somebody else in the audience is probably thinking of it as well. Another question coming in, and again, I, I bet this is one you get all the time. Does PAN require a 1040 income tax document with the application to prove income? That's a great question. Um, thank you for that question. Initially, we don't require any income documentation when you apply. We provide a determination to you right away. So um, usually we don't ask you for that information. But as we explained earlier, the entire application process takes about six minutes or so. And um, if we do review later and we find out that the income that was provided is different than what is showing on Experian, what we'll do is that we'll follow up with the patient to get documentation. But if that information is the same, we don't um, request for additional income information. Thank you so much. And one of the things, in addition to that thorough and straightforward answer, I also just want to stress um, something that I never seem to be impressed by, which is that um, you, patients will find out whether they, they whether or not they're um, eligible um, within six minutes. I think that really is incredible. So we do have a few more questions coming in, and I'm gonna go ahead and ask you um, a few more because we do have some time. The next one coming in, can I apply for a second grant if I know I'm going to need more money for the rest of the year? That's a great one. Sure, Carla, that is a good question. So I think it is important to note that you are on, um, only eligible to apply for a second grant when your grant balance is zero. So once your grant balance is zero, you may apply for additional assistance, um, second grant at any time during the eligibility period if the fund is open. Um, we, just, we just make sure that the the grant balance at the moment when you apply is zero and the disease fund is open. And once that is the case, you can go right ahead and apply for additional assistance. That's great. That's really important because um, for people to know that if they are what to do and what to expect, if they know that they're going to need more money for the rest of the year, this way they can stay on top of hopefully getting that need filled. Another question coming in, and I know um, I've asked you this myself, which is why do patients, or in this case, why do I, have to submit a claim every 120 days to keep my grant? I can take this question. Thank you for uh, this question. Uh, we want to make sure that you are using your grants as intended so if we do not receive a paid claim within four months, we will cancel the grant and make it available to another patient in need. Um, so we will actually notify the patient and the provider every 90 days if we don't receive a paid claim. If you have any extenuating circumstances when we notify you, please contact us. We always take those into consideration. That's another important thing to stress. Thank you for answering the question, but also stressing that if if um, people that are reaching out to Pan Foundation do have um, are going through challenging time, have extenuating circumstances, that they can reach out to the Pan Foundation um, to see if there are options. And again, I think it's really important to be able to um, sometimes just reach out to an actual person, whether it's a phone number, a call center, or an email address, that can be super helpful. Another question coming in, which is, I, which is actually, I think, a great question to wrap up the presentation on, because it'll give Audrey and Joan um, a chance to respond. And I also have some feedback regarding this question, which is, what can I do if my medication is not covered? Sure, I can take this one. So on our website, um, if you go under find a disease fund, you may send us a message if you do not see your medication listed. Um, what you can do is you just send us an email right from the website or you can call us 
um, again, our number is 866-316-7263, and you can submit your request that way. Um, just to a little bit, just to let the to let people know up front is that if you request this, usually it takes about seven business days or so for us to follow up and provide you with the update, but you can definitely submit it and we review it to make sure that it's either um, in NCCN compendia or guideline recommended and we'll definitely um, review it and follow up with you to let you know if it's approved. Thank you so much. Um... And it, I, as I said, when I asked Audrey and Joan this question, and thank you to our audience members for submitting it, I also wanted to remind everybody that Needy Meds is also here as a source of support if you are having difficulty affording your medications. Of course, reach out to the PAN Foundation. Um, they just provided you with some um, information on what to do if your particular medication is not covered. Um, but also remember that Needy Meds is here as a source of support as well. Again, under needymeds.org, that healthcare savings tab. There's about a dozen different categories on ways to save on your healthcare costs. And of course, that includes medication, but it is not limited to medication. Check out that healthcare savings tab and don't hesitate to reach out to one of our call center counselors at 1-800-503-6897. And you can see that phone number in the phone number on the bottom right hand of our screen. Needy Meds is located in Massachusetts, so we are open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays Eastern time. And we do have Spanish-speaking counselors. So you can reach out to that, check out that healthcare savings section. You can call our call center counselors. And if we're not able to find you a healthcare savings uh, that matches your need, and we can't connect you with one through the PAN Foundation or another partnering organization, we can provide you with the Needy Meds drug discount card, which is also a safety net. It's good to have that um, in your wallet or on your phone, because if we can't connect you to a healthcare savings program, at least you can use the Needy Meds drug discount card to try and get some saving at the pharmacy. So keep that in mind. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's presentation. A few reminders that um, you can find our PowerPoint slide decks in that handout section, along with other materials we thought you'd be interested in. Um, we do hope at Needy Meds that you join us for future webinars, and you can find those upcoming webinars on the bottom right hand of our homepage on that calendar of events. And of course, we hope you check out the PAN Foundation website as well as needymeds.org. Peruse them both when you have time to familiarize yourself um, with the breadth and scope of the resources that we can hopefully connect you to. Of course, a huge thank you for, to my friends and colleagues, and Audrey and Joan, for taking time out of their busy schedule to share their expertise with the Needy Meds audience. We really do value our partnership with the PAN Foundation, and we, take every chance we can to spread the word about the important work that the PAN Foundation does. Thanks everybody for your time. Hopefully you'll have a safe, healthy, and happy rest of the day. Take good care. Thank you and thank you to Audrey and Joan. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.